All right. So we are going to be talking about the healthcare program. So there are four different jobs that we'll be talking through. But first, we'll go ahead and introduce ourselves. So I'm Sarah. I'm the instructor for these four different programs. And then I also teach the front desk program. And then we also have... I am Daniel Grillet, the student support specialist for the exact same programs that Sarah instructs. So we work together. So I do the initial teaching of the content and then Daniel follows up in the natural environment supporting and working with the students on the things that we've been learning. So we're gonna go through each job and just talk through what it is, what we teach, and then Daniel will talk more on the in the job setting, what the students do there. Okay, so our first job that we'll talk about is patient transport. And this one is a 13 week program. So we've got several pictures of the students doing different parts of the job that they would be learning. So with this one, they are working in the hospital, transporting patients to testing sites, back to their rooms um, for the inpatients there, also doing discharges. So we teach, at first we start teaching just how to interact with the patient, how to introduce yourself when you go in their rooms and the students are working with a transporter that works at the hospital and then we go along with them and Daniel can talk more about that in a little bit but we're along with those staff also so um, the students learn how to introduce themselves and then from there we build on those skills and they start learning how to use the transport equipment so they're using wheelchairs stretchers beds and we have a wheelchair and stretcher and a bed so all three in our lab at the hotel so we're able to learn and practice there with each other using that equipment and then also sanitizing the equipment so learning how to wipe it down after each transport so then once we've got that in the lab pretty good then we take that over to the hospital and they get to start practicing there um, and a couple other things that they'll learn is using the technology so you see couple of the pictures there. One, they're using the iPod. So the hospital uses iPods for the transporters and that's where their jobs come in. So they know who to get, where to pick them up, what equipment they need to get. And that's through the program that the hospital uses. Um, and then the next picture on the phone. So each patient transport staff has a phone and then they use that to call the nurses, like when they get to the floor with the patient or they might need to call their supervisor if they have a quick question. So the students learn to use that and they, they are using that by the time they get to internship. Uh, let's see. So the first one there, we've actually got two of our students transporting a patient on a bed and that always takes two. So one pushing and one pulling. We also teach how to push the IV pull, which makes it a little bit harder because you're pretty much pushing the equipment with one hand um let's see what else daniel well i was gonna say though so this is what this is my favorite job okay this is i love teaching and being a part of the patient transport program because i get my steps in all <laughs> the time every day this job is one of those jobs that you are going to be on your feet quite a bit uh, this job requires strength so the students are going to be pushing uh, not only a bed which is really heavy not only a stretcher not only a wheelchair but those with patients on them and so we uh, our students have to learn and have to have strength uh, or uh, I know a few of our students during the program uh, would consistently have workouts to uh, strengthen their upper body, their lower body, um, because they realize, wow, this job requires a lot of pushing and a lot of strength. Um, mm -hmm. You don't have to be a huge, <laughs> some professional weightlifter, but you do have to be able to manage some uh, somebody's weight in, in, in on these different uh, types of uh, transports. Mm -hmm. And um, the pullovers. Uh -huh. So the students, the pullover, for yeah. patients that aren't able to walk, they'll pull a patient over like from the bed to the stretcher. So they usually have two to three people helping with that, but the, you have to have a lot of upper body strength. So we have built in some strength training into the program for a few that have yeah. needed it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that, I mean, and when, 
when uh, Sarah talked about like communicating uh, with the, the patient, that's, that's another really big skill that um, uh, the patient transport works on is communicating with somebody, not only to introduce themselves in the initial part of the, uh, the transport, but having kind of that understanding of how to have a small talk, how to do some small talk uh, on the way to the transport or from the transport, how to read body language, how to, um, to just can, to kind of know um, when to say something, when not to say something. So that's another pretty big skill in this program. And you don't think about those things when you just think, oh, patient transport. So yeah, definitely learning like, cause there's different ranges of the patients where some are just completely unconscious. Others might be awake, but they're just coming from a procedure. So they're not very alert. And some of the students that has been something we've had to work on quite a bit is just figuring out how much to talk based on how they're feeling. Sometimes the patients aren't very nice and learning how to deal with that is also something that we've had to work on. Yeah. The, one of the, the best parts about this program is being able to work alongside the great staff at IU Health Ball Memorial Hospital. These, these are the most seen students in this program because they are going all over the hospital, interacting with, with nurses, with techs, with doctors, and then they get to work alongside an actual transporter who then not only um, is a consistent and continual model of how to do the job correctly, but also somebody who then allow, who understands to slowly give away their job to our student as they learn the, the skills uh, each day. So, so a transport, it's, it's, it's really cool the way this transition works because a transport will start uh, with, with the student and then once they get to the point where they are done, they've learned up to the, some point, they hand it back over to the transporter to finish the transport. So it's a, it's a, it's a really nice uh, image of teamwork and just kind of getting to know the job at a really safe pace. Yeah. And like Daniel was saying, each week we build on the skills from the week before. So the transporters we've worked with, some of them since the very beginning of Erskine Green, so they really know how we teach things and, and how to let the student gradually take over so that when they get to the internship time, the hospital staff is just stepping back and following them and letting the student take over and do the transports. And I think the neatest part is when we get halfway, about halfway through internship, the supervisor has built a relationship with the students throughout the session and he will go around and observe and assess the students. And if he feels like they're ready, they get to go on their own in the last couple of weeks, actually transport patients completely on their own, just like a staff at the hospital would. Yep. Okay, anything else that you want to add on this one, Daniel? Uh, nope, I think they okay. covered that. All right, so our next job is environmental services. And this is another favorite, I really think they're all my favorite. I like working over at the hospital. but. <laughs> Environmental services, so that would be similar to housekeeping. If you guys saw that one earlier, this would be similar to housekeeping at the hotel, except with at the hospital, you actually go in the patient's rooms when they're in the room. We're usually at the hotel, the room's gonna be empty. And then a lot more just in detail and, and paying attention to making sure things are sanitized. So this is a 10 week program. So with this one, there's a lot of patient interaction since they are going in the rooms. The students train on one floor, one unit, um, and then they are cleaning 18 rooms by the time they get to internships. So there's 18 rooms on the side that they work on. So we first start off just teaching some interaction, um, how to clean the side areas, because the staff are also responsible for cleaning like the nurses station, the offices in the middle, there's some supply rooms. So we teach the cleaning skills in those areas so that we're not in the patient room trying to learn how to mop. We can use some of the side areas um, to help them learn, first of all, to set up their cart, get ready for the day, and then how to, how to change the trash bags, mop the floors, wipe things down. We learn all the processes and practice them outside the room first. 
and then move on to the daily cleaning. So this job is more hands-on when we're learning, where patient transport we do some more in our lab, in the classroom first, and then they take some of those skills. They're both very hands-on, but the initial learning with environmental service were more in the setting actually doing it. Um, so once they've learned the basic cleaning skills, we start teaching the daily cleaning, and that's where they go in each patient room, and they're just getting the main things. So changing out the trash, wiping down the high touch areas, mop the floor, and just straighten things up and get it cleaned up. So that's when the patient is staying there. They're gonna be there again that night. So they just go in and straighten up and clean a few things. Um, so they practice that. We focus, a big common thing that we're focusing on is increasing speed. So the goal time is around 10 minutes. And some students we've had more in the 30 minute range at first, but we've each session we've been successful in, in finding different strategies that work and getting them down to that around the eight to 10 minute mark. So after that, then we learn the dismissal cleans and that's just building on the daily clean. So it's after the patient has been discharged, they're going home, then we learn and practice cleaning the entire room to get it ready. So like you see in the first picture, she's standing in front of a room that she's just done. And with that, they're gonna also make the bed. So that's one addition. And then just pass that as wiping everything down, taking out all of the trash. So she's just finished that there. Um, we used several different accommodations that we kind of have as standards. So the second picture, he's using a checklist for the sides and we've got it laminated so then they can use a dry erase marker and check off each side area. And that's something that we've created. The hospital has a checklist for the daily cleaning for each patient room. And then that gets turned in at the end of every day. Um, but we created this other one for the sides. Uh, Daniel, I kind of talked about a lot of the hospital things, but is there anything else to add on your end of like things that you've done to help them practice? to help increase speed or anything specific that we've worked on? So this one, this one is, I, whenever I think of EGTI, Sarah, I don't know about you, but I think about, when, when I think EGTI, I think about this program, because this was the very first program mm -hmm. that you and I taught together at the hospital. Yeah. And I, uh, I love the, the what's, what's wonderful about this program, and I mean, all of our programs have very good, like good reasons, I mean, to have like just good feelings. This one is, this floor has been with us um, since the beginning. So we train, we have been training our students pretty much on the same floor. So the nurses know who we are, who know who the students are and what to, um, and what to uh, expect from them. And, and they have an understanding. So that's a, the environment in which we are training. They understand the process of having to learn a job and needing a little bit more time to learn that job. And so this, this environment, I don't know about you, Sarah, but I, I like this environment mm -hmm. um, in which we train the students. One of the, the main trainers that we had, uh, he has just retired. And so that was really hard for us to say goodbye to this, this guy who this was basically his floor. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I like it because this is a, it's a very, the natural environment in this situation allows our students to be able to clean the same way, just in different types of, of uh, spaces. So they're not only learning mopping a bathroom in somebody's room or in that room, they're also having to do a small bathroom or a community, like a bigger locker room bathroom. They have to, uh, the different, there's three different types of sizes of trash cans. Uh, we're talking about different in, environments to clean. So they're not just learning how to clean a hospital room. They're learning how to just clean in general and be able mm -hmm. to uh, move these skills to all different types of um, environments. So th those are the skills that we, that I see here, like th that we pull from this one a lot. Um, let's see. The timers we, um, we let them see uh, with a timer, we let them see their own time so they, they can see their progress of getting faster and faster and faster. So that's one of those accommodations or one of those 
um, one of those things, not accommodation, but one of those things that we can do to encourage them with speed. That's real small, a, a real small way to, to, to teach that. Yeah. Um, and like with this job, it is very, it can transfer to a lot of different settings. So the students that leave us, ideally a lot of them want to work in a hospital setting, but they also know that they're qualified to work in a lot of different settings. So colleges, schools, you know, there's so many, any place that would have housekeeping, these students would be qualified to work in. Um, I was thinking of one other thing. I lost it there. Um, let's see. Any, I'm trying to think if there's any other accommodations, anything else that we've done with this one? No, I think we're good. Yeah, I think so. I think a big part of is our relationship with the staff at the hospital and not just the one that we're directly working with, but the entire team on the floor and then even everyone in the hospital with teaching four jobs there. We've worked our way into a lot of different areas and gotten to know a lot of staff so people that we don't even work with will comment or sometimes spy on our students a little bit and let us know about something that may have happened so those relationships as we've built them over the years have really helped make these programs a success All right okay nutrition service this is another one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> They're all our favorites. <laughs> so this one is broken up into quite a few different areas. So there's more pictures on here. Um, it is all one position. So if someone is hired in to work in nutrition services, there are different roles that they could put be put in each day. So their schedule's not always the same at our hospital. It might be different other places, but they can put in to like it, it just determines what their schedule is for that day and what area they'll be working on so we train one area at a time and then by internship put that all together where they can then work in that role alongside another staff at the hospital so we work on let's just kind of go through the pictures so the the one on the left there we teach how to deliver the food trucks up to the patient floors so our hospital has ambassadors and they're the ones that are actually going into the patient room, getting their orders and then delivering the tray to them. So that's a separate role from the role that our students are training in. But part of the role that we do teach is taking that food truck up to the floor and then the ambassador will take it from there. So with that, there's a whole process where they check it out on the computer. So actually not picture, it's real small. There's a computer screen bef behind her where she would have checked out that cart based on the number and then where it was going and then she would deliver that up. So navigation of the hospital is a big thing that we work on the first few weeks so that they're able to do that part of it. Um, the next one over, so we teach the general cleaning and that's required of all of the staff at some point during their schedule is some of the general cleaning just to keep the kitchen area clean throughout the day. So we teach how to use the mop, how to fill up the mop bucket, the thing that <laughs> there's different ways of attaching the mops and it seems like it changes every session, they get a different kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've taught several different ways and then just the process of mopping, working your way backwards so that you're not walking over what you've just mopped. Um, and then we also teach cleaning the sinks. Uh, back in the dish room, the students learn how to tear down the entire dish machine and clean that. They do that a couple of times a day. Clean in that whole area. They spray down the floor with hose, squeegee. So all the general cleaning stuff we work on. Uh, another main part, so in the dish room, there are several different areas that the students learn to work. So the one where they're holding trays, there's gonna be a, um, like a countertop where they're unloading the tray. And then we teach the process of how to unload all of those dishes. And then it goes onto a conveyor belt where it will then go around to be put into the dish machine. So then that's what the one in the middle there, it, she is loading the dish machine. So it's just a big conveyor belt where it goes around, one person loads, and then the person on the other end is unloading and putting away all the dishes. So then the next one over is along with getting or delivering the food trucks up to the floors, the students learn how to collect all the dirty trays from all of the patient floors. So they take one of these trucks here to each of the soiled utility rooms and I counted them up once. I think there's over 20 different rooms throughout the hospital. It might be higher than that. 
So we've got a checklist that could clip onto the cart there, or they could clip it on their shirt, and it's just laminated with a dry erase marker, and it's got each location listed out so they can check off as they go. So their job, that job takes about two hours, so they'll do that after breakfast and then after lunch, go around and get all the dirty trays and bring them down to the dish room so that they can get unloaded. And then we've just got a couple closer up ones there, so checking out the cart to, tra to take it up. And then the last one there, he's standing at where the conveyor belt is, where all the dishes get unloaded. What I like, what I really like about this program is how repetitive the job is. So then the students learn, seem to learn the skills a lot faster in this environment because there's, you're doing the same um, skills and the same tasks over and over and over. And that's everybody, that's just this job in general. Mm -hmm. So we have found that it is a lot easier because of the, cons the, the constant repetition. And with, when, when a student is in a position, they're pretty much there for the rest of that day. And so they're getting a lot of repetition um, because that's how the, the actual environment is run. And, um, and so because our students will learn the different areas, they get to train in that area and um, they have a lot of a lot of places for us to be able to continue uh, share the the burden of the responsibilities that they have, and so our students learn faster and faster because they're they're dependent on. It. Mm -hmm. Like um, when when they practice, they can't practice with clean dishes, so they are constantly practicing and doing the job. And so yeah, yeah. This we, they're doing the job and they're relying on us because they do their scheduling based on knowing our students will be there, so their mm -hmm. staff are other places. So. The students are doing the job. <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, a lot of, in this one, it's just kind of, you just a lot of muscle memory. You just learn how to do it over and over and over mm -hmm. repetition. Uh, navigation skills, like Sarah had said, that's really important in this job are the, is the navigation skills. Yeah. And this one, there's a lot, there's a lot of room for growth or moving into different areas. It could lead to working in as like as the kitchen cook or one of the prep cooks or out in the cafeteria area where they're serving food um, or moving up to an ambassador. We've had one of our students work at the hospital and she also works as an ambassador sometimes. So it's not like you just have to stay in the one role. There's a lot of areas that you can move around into. Okay, I think this is our last one. So inventory distribution. This is one that we added more recently, but I think time's gotten away. It's probably been a couple years now that we've been doing this one. So 10 mm -hmm. weeks. Yeah. And this one is, so inventory distribution. So they're, they're distributing supplies throughout the hospital to the supply rooms that the nurses and doctors would be using. So there's a big warehouse downstairs where some of the supplies are picked. So we're learning how to follow a code, how to follow an order list and be able to pick those supplies and then take them up and put them away. So that's what a couple of those middle pictures are. We learned to use the scanner and that makes a pick list basically of what needs to be ordered. They have recently switched over to where their main distribution centers in Plainfield. So a lot of their supplies come from there on a truck and then it just is delivered up and they put it away in the floors that they belong on. Um, we also teach the linen. So this is part of distribution and the linen is washed at another company, but then brought in and the students learn to fill these carts that are then taken throughout the hospital. And then last is working in the shipping and receiving area. So all of the packages that come into the hospital are processed through this area where they learn to work. So they learn to open the boxes, check the pick list, and make sure everything is in the package that the paper says. So there's just a certain process that we learn to follow there. And then all of these are working alongside hospital staff, just like all of our other jobs. This is one of those, this, this is one of those um, uh, kind of skill sets or the, the, set, the, the program that really lend to a lot of uh, skills to get jobs in a lot of different environments because you're constantly learning how to stock like every day they are stocking these rooms they're learning how to stock these carts so you can work in uh, say you know you, you can go as far as like again a hospital a, den a dentist office 
all the way to like, you know, maybe stocking like a, a Walgreens or something. Just Amazon, knowing Amazon, FedEx, UPS, Amazon, yep. yeah. Just a lot of that that those skills, and then shipping and receiving. So learning how to check things in the boxes to make sure that that what what is on the paper is in fact what they're receiving. And so that that has a lot of places where they can use those skills. And then again, laundry, being able to just stock a, a, a cart a specific way to be able to then take it all to the different places in the hospital. So navigation, again, that's another, another thing they're learning and they're constantly a part of. Mm -hmm. um, this one Depending has to take where, reading. Oh, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. I was just saying some of the skills, uh, some of the other skills that you're going to need and you have in this, in this one is like reading, being able to identify and be able to locate and yeah, stock that, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. depending on where they're working at within this, there is quite a bit of communication with nurses, people on the floor, like the middle pictures there, they're on the patient floor stocking server carts. This big cart has a lot of supplies, they're in the supply rooms. So a, a good level of communication needs to happen there with the nurses, someone asks for something, making sure they're following through with that. But then down in the warehouse, you're more on your own. There's not people coming and going asking for help. So we've been able to use that for su certain students that may be stronger in certain areas, we can focus them in on those areas and then continue working and practicing on the areas that they're having a harder time with. Uh, the one, the red binder there, you can't see inside of it, but that's a uh, check sheet that we use for those server carts because each one's stocked the same way. So we have lots of built-in accommodations that we use for the students and then just fade them out as they master each skill. So I think we're getting down on time here. I want to make sure we have time for questions. We've got a lot of questions going on, so I yeah. think this would be a good time. So you've probably already seen this. If you guys haven't already, you can visit our website if you have any other questions. And now is our time to open up to questions. So if you have one, you can unmute your mic. And then I think we also have several in the chat. Yeah, so I've been able to answer some of them and some I am gonna be getting some more information um, for. So one um, question is, what is an expected reading level? So you were talking about reading um, is needed for these jobs in the hospital. So what is an expected reading level for um, the EGTI training programs or specifically these jobs that you're training? Um, is there kind of an equivalence to that you could put it towards a like a grade level um yeah so help me out if i miss anything daniel depending on the job it's going to have different reading requirements so patient transport the students are going to need to be able to read different patient names they're going to need to know some the testing sites which testing sites as long as you've got some level of reading we're going to be able to teach and practice those but the different names can be tough and then there's also cursive where the patient transporters are having to read uh, dry erase boards with the nurses names and that's sometimes written in cursive so we do assess that in our interview because that is something that they would need to do um, nutrition service and environmental service we have had some students that had very low reading and with the reading required we were able to either make some accommodations or they were just able to work their way around that so like environmental service uh, we had a list of the different side areas to be cleaned and it was laminated checklist and we had a student that wasn't able to read those words so we just took pictures of each of those rooms that they needed to clean and then use that as a checklist same with nutrition service if we had a written checklist we were able to use some pictures uh, distribution pretty strong reading skills would be needed for that but there's also where you can match so if there's a bigger word or an abbreviation they can't quite figure out you can usually match it from the package to the label for like to tie it to a grade equivalency I don't know that I could do that without looking into it more is there anything else Daniel that you'd add to that one I yeah it's hard it's 
again, it's, it's hard to put a reading level because you're reading people's names. You're, you're learning. Um, there is a lot of repetitive uh, uh, wording in uh, like for patient transport because when you see a wheelchair come up enough, you know that that's yeah, what a wheelchair yeah. is. So yeah. with that one, it's, it's a lot of repetition. And, um, but for shipping, it's just constantly changing. You're changing uh, the names, the destinations, the type of, uh, the type of equipment are in the box. Go ahead, Fenway. Um, we're at the one minute mark. Sorry. Uh, that's when I was putting my finger up no. um, for that. So, um, another that, question. Um, I've answered the other ones. Um, if there's any additional questions, you can email us at info at egti.org um, and we will get to responses back to you for that. Um, yeah. So if there are no other questions, we appreciate you for joining our virtual EGTI day. Um, this was the last session for it. Um, so thank you for joining. Um, I wanted to say that before it cuts us off of here. Yeah, thank you guys so much for giving us your time to come check it out. Fenway, thank you for all your work. I mean, I, this is a long day and you had to get on each of these. So thank you for all that hard work you put in, man. <laughs> Glad this yeah, helped thank you. everyone. So. Thank you guys. Yeah. Okay. Let us know if you have any questions. Email us at info at egti.org.